So, uh, like the previous speaker, my presentation is uh, going to be relatively short, uh, to the point, and hopefully just as interesting uh, for you. Uh, the news headlines uh, nowadays, they're all about uh, APTs, uh, military-grade malware, and really fancy stuff like that. I'm not going to be speaking, speaking any uh, uh, about uh, such a cool uh, topic. Instead, I'm going to uh, document a case uh, which we've uh, which we've analyzed, and it's a, it's a it's a botnet which uh, affected the everyday Joe. So this is uh, this is something which is targeting uh, ordinary people, and that uh, ordinary people uh, have to keep in mind and watch out for. Uh, as as you can see in the title, uh, there uh, from from the buzzwords in the title, uh, it was it was quite an quite an interesting uh, malware. This is this is these buzzwords are also the reason why it uh, caught our attention. Uh, in the first place, and it's uh, not a particularly sophisticated uh, Trojan. So on a scale from one to five, where where one is script kitty and five is uh, military grade, I'd say this is about two and a half. Uh, but it's interesting to talk about because uh, the MO of the malware and, and the way it uh, accomplishes task was unlike anything we've seen before. So uh, let let's take a look. Uh, this is uh, where I work. Uh, I'm a malware researcher at uh, ESET in Bratislava. Uh, this is, these are the offices of uh, ESET's uh, uh, virus lab, the security research lab, as uh, in the modern times uh, we, we have to call it because it's not just about uh, fighting, fighting uh, viruses anymore. Uh, our main, main uh, thing that we focus on here, obviously, is detection. Uh, so doing detection signatures uh, in order to protect uh, the customers. Uh, but whenever the detection team, they uh, find uh, anything which is interesting and worthy of spending more time, not just uh, the limited uh, couple of minutes to uh, craft the detection signatures, they would forward it to one of the analysts uh, over, over here, and they can then spend uh, much more time, hours and days, uh, if necessary, on a particular sample. Uh, and if something something really stands out, uh, we can uh, monitor botnet operations, uh, do sinkhole attempt, uh, bo uh, botnet takedowns. Uh, if we find any any clues uh, hidden in the binaries, which would uh, make it possible to uh, show attribution as to what uh, kinds of groups are behind the malware, we would try to cooperate with law enforcement. So basically, all kinds of uh, operations are uh, taking place here. And uh, the Facebook poker agent is also one of those uh, pretty interesting cases. So, uh, one of the first uh, buzzwords, uh, Facebook. Uh, before I get to the main, main topic, uh, the poker agent uh, Trojan, I just want to spend a couple of minutes uh, on Facebook as, uh, and, and its role in, uh, in malware and how, how its role has, has evolved in the past couple of years. It was quite, quite interesting to uh, document this evolution of uh, malware spreading techniques from mass mailing worms, uh, drive-by downloads, and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's also interesting to note that while exploits and drive-by downloads are obviously a really serious issue, uh, sadly, I'd say uh, uh, this, this isn't, isn't really the number one uh, vector of uh, spreading stuff, as it's much easier for the malware attackers to exploit the, the vulnerabilities in humans. Uh, rather than in software, and it's also much cheaper for them. Uh, so most malware uh, that, that we, we see coming, coming through our servers, and when we are able to attribute uh, how, they, uh, how the victims got infected by this malware, uh, it would be some kind of social engineering uh, ploy. And many of those uh, occur on the, on the biggest, uh, biggest social network out there, which is quite understandable, because uh, uh, last time I checked, uh, Facebook had uh, 1.5 billion active users, so one in seven people uh, on the planet are using Facebook, and it's, uh, it's a pretty major vector uh, for spreading malware. But it's not only being used uh, as a spreading vector, but uh, uh, also for, for harvesting the credentials, and its role, its role in the whole malware ecosystem is different, and I'll show the different roles in uh, two examples. Uh, before poker agent. So the first example uh, is an interesting case uh, where Trojan was spreading uh, through Facebook and also the Russian, uh, uh, the Russian uh, social network of Kontakte. And it was also 
Apart from the spreading mechanism, it was uh, also an interesting malware family. So uh, on this conference, we heard uh, about Bitcoin. Uh, this malware uh, also had components uh, which uh, were employed to do Bitcoin mining uh, on, the, on the botnet. Uh, and it was also being able to uh, carry out a denial of service attacks uh, to distribute further malware. And basically, it provided uh, a platform for distributing malware and getting uh, additional malware components uh, on the system, and it facilitated that uh, by uh, attempting to remove uh, the installed antivirus uh, from the system. So uh, Delph QCZ, uh, as our detection name uh, calls it, is quite an interesting malware. Uh, but for the, for the sake of this presentation, I'm just going to be focusing on, on the spreading mechanism. And it basically used uh, uh, old and known and widely used techniques, but in each case, uh, it improved on those techniques and brought the social engineering aspect uh, of the scam to a totally, totally different level. Uh, so, as we're all aware, uh, and uh, we're quite familiar with uh, spam being distributed through uh, either email or instant messengers or through social, social networks such as Facebook, uh, so it's, uh, people aren't uh, really surprised when they see a link from, uh, from a robot or for, from an infected friend of theirs. Uh, which would be trying to, uh, which would be s s send them a link, pointing to uh, the download of a malicious executable. So that's that's old news. The way uh, Delph QCZ uh, improved this technique was that it added a little bit of, uh, let's say, artificial intelligence uh, to the scam, so it wouldn't serve the link uh, right away, but that would only be followed after a couple of uh, introductory uh, sentences. So it would try to mimic uh, real conversation. Of course, this was all scripted, so if you try to uh, interact with the bot, uh, try to ask a question, you couldn't really be fooled by it, but it proved quite effective uh, when, when we saw the, saw the telemetry and how this spread was uh, sp spreading and, and the amounts of infected users. So basically, the, the scenarios, I don't think you can see the timestamps, it even uh, added some delays, so it wasn't like boom, 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 uh, right after the other, you would get uh, all these messages, but there were some delays. Uh, it would uh, be waiting for, uh, for the response. And at the end, uh, it would serve the link is as, as expected. If you clicked on that link, uh, you would be navigated to, again, something which uh, has been around for, for uh, quite, a, quite, a few uh, quite a few years. Uh, the typical scenario, if you want to uh, view an awesome video, you have to first upgrade, upgrade your flash player, codec, whatever. And of course, uh, typical Trojan uh, technique, you're not, uh, there, there won't be any video, instead you'll be getting infected. Uh, the way these guys improved that uh, was that they personalized this whole infection uh, experience and they would extract the name of your Facebook, uh, your Facebook name and uh, make uh, you the lead, uh, the lead role uh, of that video. So this would uh, play on your curiosity. And if this wasn't enough uh, to convince you, it, will, uh, it would also extract uh, through the Facebook API a list of your friends and uh, add make-believe comments uh, underneath that video. And the comments are like, you must be so ashamed to, to do that. How could you have done it? That's so terrible. And uh, this one is particularly interesting. I had to upgrade Flash Player, but it was really worth it. This video is the very, very best. So. Uh, this is, this is uh, probably uh, the most well-carried-out uh, social engineering attack of this kind uh, that we have seen uh, until now. Uh, another example uh, where Facebook uh, is playing a role in uh, malicious uh, activities is a like -jack are the numerous uh, likejacking campaigns uh, going around uh, on, this, on this social network. Of course, in this, in, in this scenario, a uh, falsified uh, copy of Facebook. Uh, tr again, you are trying to, uh, you are, you're being served a video of some uh, naked celebrities. That, that works every time. People are, people are uh, curious uh, to watch these things. And what's interesting in this case is that uh, the attackers, they're expecting uh, this thing to be detected by the AV. So they would even, even add a notice uh, saying, please temporarily disable your antivirus uh, to continue to watch, watch this video. This is, uh, this is detected and it's, and it's a false alarm. Uh, so that was uh, quite interesting to note, to notice. 
but if it wasn't if it wasn't detected, so if this actually went through, uh, in here again the similar technique you would be uh, shown uh, this uh, web page. Uh, in order to download the uh, in order to view the video, you must uh, upgrade or you must uh, download a DivX plugin. What's interesting in this case is that. Uh, malware usually uh, takes form in some kind of uh, executable binary or as, uh, as some kind of uh, script. Uh, in the past uh, one or two years, we've seen more and more uh, malware taking form uh, of uh, browser extensions, browser plugins. That's also the case here, uh, where this would detect uh, what kind of browser you're running and it would uh, serve you the according uh, According to that, it would serve the plugin. So I think uh, this also this had uh, versions for Firefox and also for Chrome. And if you install that, uh, this wasn't uh, any malware being uh, being uh, further for installed on your system, but it was basically a viral spreading, uh, pr tr trying to promote. At the time, at the time when we were monitoring this, it would it was promoting a porn site, I think. So it would uh, abuse uh, the whole Facebook uh, sharing. Uh, sharing uh, ecosystem in order to promote the website, uh, add, uh, tag all your friends there, and try to try to spread that. So this was uh, spreading also quite fast. Okay, so now to the main uh, main topic uh, of today's talk. Uh, a couple of uh, interesting uh, things that we uh, that we saw in uh, these binaries, uh, particularly the string poker agent. Uh, that wasn't a name that uh, I came up with, but that showed up uh, in, the, in the binary when we analyzed it. It was written in uh, C sharp, so it was fairly easy to uh, decompile it into a state which is quite similar uh, to, to the source code, or, all, or, or nearly the source code. Uh, we saw some references to Zynga Poker. Uh, we saw that this was uh, spreading through Facebook, so uh, we started look, looking uh, more, more in, in greater details into this uh, thread. Obviously, we aren't able uh, to spend that much attention on every single uh, every single Trojan as we are uh, detecting and basically we are uh, 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 our servers are seeing uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, new new uh, fresh binaries every day and with these most of these are uh, processed uh, automatically and only add a f few uh, clusterized uh, uh, Clusters, uh, the analysts would would take a look at them and uh, do uh, generic signatures for those. Uh, yeah, so uh, this case uh, it was most active and it was ac actively spreading uh, from December 2011 uh, to February 2012. But the but the botnet and the CNC servers they were uh, they were active after that. So uh, you can see that on this on this timeline. I don't, I don't think you can see the dates, but over here this was uh, middle of February. Uh, when it actively stopped spreading, uh, but uh, the operations uh, they uh, they were taking place a couple of a uh, couple of months after that. We only published this research uh, at the at the beginning of this year because uh, after we forwarded this information uh, to the law enforcement in Israel, that's uh, that's where it was uh, uh, most widespread. Uh, it was also it was under under an inv investigation embargo. Uh, yeah, so uh, we started looking into this. We started analyzing the malware, and uh, it was, as I, as I mentioned, it was uh, unlike anything else uh, uh, what we've seen. Uh, the people that were infected with uh, with the bot, they weren't actually the final victims. Instead, they were used as as a sort of proxy uh, to carry out uh, malicious activities on behalf of the attacker. So that was uh, a way of the attacker to. Uh, hide his uh, hide his activities and to to uh, offer him an on uh, anonymity. Uh, when we analyzed it, we and, and the various clues that were left be left behind in the malware, uh, we came to the co the conclusion that uh, this wasn't this wasn't a professional malware writer, so there was no real uh, real obfuscation. It was written in a uh, let's say let's say. Uh, Programming language was, which isn't really that typical for uh, malware. Uh, but when we analyzed uh, analyzed the project and the source code, uh, it was probably some uh, some programmer uh, which had previous programming experience and uh, decided to uh, go to the dark side and to use his programming skills uh, for evil and to monetize that. So uh, what were these what were these individual bots 
uh, being instructed to do. They were, they were sent uh, pairs of uh, Facebook uh, login credentials, so a pair of a uh, username and a password, uh, of which uh, the attacker had in his possession uh, quite an extensive database of these. Uh, in the beginning, we had no idea how he got uh, those credentials in the first place. And uh, the individual bots, uh, when, they were, when, they, when they were sent uh, this pair, this uh, task uh, which constituted of uh, the Facebook credentials, uh, they were instructed to query uh, two interesting pieces of information from that account. Uh, he was interested in uh, how many po uh, Zinger Poker uh, points uh, that account had or that uh, poker player had. Uh, whether any credit card information was linked to that account, and also to expand uh, his, uh, his operation, it, he would also uh, set, uh, lay, uh, post phishing, uh, phishing posts to the victim's walls. Uh, here, are some, here are some details how, uh, how exactly that worked. So the Zynga, Zynga Poker statistics, uh, they were extracted through the official uh, Zynga API. So the, it, the, the bot, uh, the, uh, the Trojan had an implementation of, uh, of a browser in itself. It would navigate uh, to a URL like this. Like this. Uh, uh, since, he, since he had the Facebook credentials in the first place, he, would, uh, he was able to uh, get the Facebook numeric ID, which was substituted there, and also, also a signature, which was uh, necessary for the request to carry out successfully. And after that, uh, this was returned uh, an XML uh, format. And, and here, uh, the bot was only interested in, uh, I think, uh, the rank and the points uh, which, that, which that particular player uh, had. Now, uh, we can only speculate uh, why exactly what, what his real motive of uh, acquiring this uh, piece of information was. Uh, as, as we are, are all well uh, well aware of, uh, Zynga doesn't uh, offer an official way of uh, cashing out uh, of these poker chips, although there are some ways uh, of doing so. Uh, so perhaps he wanted to monetize that, perhaps he was just, uh, uh, just, a, just a poker player who wanted to cheat and who wanted to uh, increase, increase his uh, uh, stack, whatever, hard to say. The second piece of inform uh, information that he was interested in uh, and that he wanted to update his uh, database of sto stolen credentials with uh, was the credit card information. Now that's pretty obvious uh, how he could abuse that uh, either by himself or by uh, offering this uh, on black markets to third parties. So uh, the browser imp implementation in the bot it would navigate uh, to this URL, uh, which would look like this if you type that into your browser. Uh, and he was, uh, and the implementation would uh, parse uh, this field in the HTML, and if you have any payment methods uh, linked to your Facebook, Facebook account, uh, which I strongly discourage uh, anyone uh, to do so, that, uh, that uh, Trojan would be able to uh, extract that and send that uh, to the attacker. Uh, the phishing that I mentioned, uh, the individual tasks which, was, which were sent uh, to the attackers, they uh, were dependent on uh, whether these, uh, these previous two actions were successful or not. Uh, so it would first check whether uh, he had, uh, what, what his rank, uh, what his poker uh, rankings were. And if he, if he found, uh, let's say, a rich poker player which uh, had a high, uh, high ranking and didn't have, uh, didn't have uh, zero, zero chips, he would also try to expand and try to add phishing links uh, uh, to that uh, user's wall. So this, this log logic uh, is quite surprising. Uh, I don't, we don't really know uh, why the bot, uh, why, why the bot uh, functioned in this way, because uh, it's actually proving that uh, the uh, author perhaps wasn't greedy, which is uh, something that we don't uh, see that often. Uh, perhaps he was tr just uh, trying to be careful and trying to uh, limit uh, the number of people and trying to uh, minimize uh, his visibility. But if, that, uh, uh, if those conditions were met, uh, then uh, this would uh, be returned from the server. As you can see, the communication, uh, the CNC protocol uh, was uh, done in SOAP. And uh, one such uh, task uh, also would contain, as these are, these are the uh, Facebook uh, credentials, the user ID, the username and password. And it will also car uh, carry 
uh, DES encrypted uh, link, which was then decrypted and uh, posted to the, uh, to the victim's wall. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this was most prevalent uh, in Israel. Uh, so that's why, that's why the Hebrew uh, link. And as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, uh, the, typical, uh, the typical social engineering techniques, uh, which always work, in this, in this uh, particularly, uh, particular example, uh, some uh, naked ce celebrities, uh, if you clicked on that, you would be navigated to uh, some uh, Big Brother uh, participants uh, sleeping together, obviously a hot topic uh, in Israel. But there were, uh, there were uh, different, uh, different versions. Uh, this, this changed uh, quite often during the time that uh, these attacks were active. So basically, the, the next potential victim would click on that. He would be navigated to, uh, let's say, a landing site. And if he wanted to view a video or if he clicked anything on that site, then he would be navigated to, again, a one-to-one -one copy uh, of, uh, of Facebook. Uh, and this was, this was the phishing, uh, phishing uh, attack uh, taking place. Uh, many, uh, this, this, the address field, of course, uh, it can be hidden. Uh, in the in the browser, so many people didn't didn't really realize that uh, they were uh, they were becoming victims of uh, of a phishing attack. Uh, many 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 people actually did. So uh, when we when we were monitoring the botnet and uh, we saw uh, the email addresses of the people uh, that uh, that uh, were in the attacker's database, uh, not not everyone fell victim for that, and there were also email addresses like. Uh, Screw you, you, sc you scammers. Dot uh, whatever. So uh, fortunately, uh, his uh, his success ratio uh, wasn't a hundred percent, but it was but it was uh, fairly high. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of uh, technical details uh, which are worth mentioning uh, from the from the analysis. As I said, uh, this was all all carried out in uh, .NET. There were some. Uh, there were some uh, browser elements, uh, parsing of HTML. Uh, this is an interesting way that uh, the bot was able to overcome uh, the Facebook protection mechanism uh, when it would detect that you're logging in uh, through, through uh, an unknown, unknown browser. So the, basically it would detect uh, that website, uh, it would uh, parse it, and uh, it would then try to click uh, on the links which would tell it to continue it. It would also save the device uh, with uh, some, some name like, like home or something, something casual like that. So as I said, really uh, not a, not a, a professional uh, malware operation, but uh, the attacker definitely put some thought uh, in creating this uh, stuff. So to, to summarize uh, the way this works, uh, the attacker, uh, he was uh, harvesting uh, Facebook logon credentials. Uh, he had he had a database, and after we found out uh, the whole whole phishing uh, attack through the uh, malicious or the, through the falsified uh, Facebook uh, logon page, uh, basically the circle closed, and that pr uh, provided us uh, the answer to how he got his uh, uh, got his database in the first place. And then he would instruct the individual bots, uh, which were part of his botnet, uh, to log into those accounts and uh, query these two particular pieces of information uh, from that account and update his database. Hard to say what he did, uh, what he did with that afterwards, so whether he monetized it, uh, that's a piece of information that we don't know. Uh, so after we, after we uh, found, uh, found out about this, uh, we, we asked ourselves the question uh, whether we can do uh, something more about it. Uh, we started uh, monitoring the botnets. We uh, started uh, looking out for uh, new versions. So obviously, uh, the primary task uh, of the lab to detect this stuff uh, that was covered, but we wanted to uh, do some uh, do some more proactive steps. And uh, there were also some some interesting uh, clues uh, hidden in the binaries. So some some nesting accounts, uh, something which uh, could potentially uh, provide us uh, information regarding attribution and who was behind this. So we passed uh, that uh, piece of information uh, to the Israeli CERT and law enforcement uh, who carried out 
inv investigation on their part. So also, obviously, we contacted Facebook uh, to provide uh, to issue a warning to those uh, to those users to reset their passwords and so on and so forth. Uh, just to just to get a, get an idea of the scale of these attacks. Uh, uh, the botnet had over uh, 800 bots, which isn't really that many, but uh, I think they uh, they got the got the job done. Uh, they were nearly all of them uh, were in Israel. That number uh, doesn't doesn't uh, comes from uh, the botnet monitoring, so it's not just from our telemetry, uh, which would be uh, limited to our users. So that's uh, a fairly good estimate of the number of infection, I would say. And uh, we know that the attacker had in his possession at least 16,000 uh, stolen Facebook credentials, uh, at least because uh, we weren't able to uh, get, get our hands on, uh, on all of the, all of the stole, stolen logins. Uh, and it's, it's also a pretty rough estimate because, as I mentioned before, not all of those uh, credentials in the database were valid. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you're interested in uh, cases uh, in investigations such as these, uh, do visit our blog at welivesecurity.com. If you're interested in uh, statistics and descriptions of malware, more technical descriptions, uh, and uh, if you're interested in what uh, types of malware are more or less prevalent in a particular region, uh, you can navigate to virusradar.com. Uh, if you think of any questions uh, which uh, you can't think of right away, uh, don't hesitate to email me. If you have any questions right now, fire away. Uh, how were you able to access the database with the credentials? Uh, basically, we, uh, we acted as, a, as, a, as a, an infected bot. So, we, so the uh, CNC would be serving the tasks uh, to our uh, bot and uh, we, we, we were logging, logging all that information. So it was, it was pre pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easy in this case. As far as mitigation, this is, this is also a really good example uh, where two-factor authentication would uh, really, really help prevent such attacks. So uh, yeah, certainly, certainly encourage uh, everyone to do two-factor authentication. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.